mercies endureth forever, and his truth does, they tell me, endure to all generations. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here, look at me, I got the old sling on here, man. They cut on old boy's rotator cup, man. I, I got to tell you, they put a hurt on me. It was arthroscopic, baby, but it hurt. They tell me I got to be in this sling for about four or five weeks. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I really don't, because now I'm totally relying upon Miss Lila for everything. Oh, that that's not a good thing, ladies and gentlemen, because if I may say something wrong, she liable to hit me upside the head, and I can't hit her back. I'm, I'm at her will. No, no, we're making it through. I appreciate all the prayers. I appreciate everybody coming in and telling me, you know, get well soon. That's all good stuff. I love, love each and every one of you today. So today we are starting a whole new series. New series is uh, the premiere series. Uh, and we're going to take you through the wholesale process. Now, the key to buying property wholesale is that you got to buy it at a discount, right? And so we're going to talk about that later. But also, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, I talked about this new series. I'm going to be talking to you about the millionaire mindset also, right? So it's not just about real estate. It's, it's about having the mindset where if you do make a million, do you know how to keep a million? And so I, I want to talk to you a little bit about that today. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to start off talking about the millionaire mindset. We're going to take about 10 minutes uh, to talk through that. And then I want to get into my presentation. So if you will, at this point, everybody mute, everybody uh, turn your cameras off, and uh, we're going to get this thing started. So uh, let's, let's talk about uh, a rayism today. Uh, the, the rayism today uh, has to do with what is it that you value? Now, uh, Mahatma Gandhi said this, and this is so true, and this is, this is my premise for today. Your beliefs, what you believe, become your thoughts, okay? And your thoughts, what you think about, becomes your words. As a man thinketh, so he is. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Your words become your actions. That's what we see every day. We see how you move, we act what you do. Your actions, as you do them every day, guess what? They become your habits. And your habits become your values. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going somewhere right here. Now, what you value becomes your destiny. Oh, I'm talking to somebody today. Now, over the next few weeks, I'm really going to be breaking this down. And we're going to really come to find out what it is that you really value because that's going to tell me your destiny, all right? I'm going to understand what your destiny is when we determine what your values are. So when we talk about the millionaire mindset, I want to know what is your why? Why, why are you here? What is your motivation in life, okay? Why is it that you do what you do? And we're going to get to the heart of that because eventually that's going to expose to me what your values are. What is your highest and your greatest priority for life? What is it that you value the most? What is the greatest priority? What is that thing that you do the majority of your wait time on this earth? What is your priority? You may not even know what that is, but we're going to uncover that. What are you trying to accomplish in life? Well, why, what, what are you doing? Are you just here going through the motions, going to work, going to school, feeding the kids? You know, uh, you just going, what, why are you here? What are you really trying to accomplish? What are you doing? And what gives you the greatest amount of satisfaction? When you do what you do, at the end of the day, when you lay down in your bed at night, what gives you the greatest amount of satisfaction? Why are you here? Why am I where, Mr. Ray? Why are you on this earth, people? Earth with an F. Why are you here? Why did God place you on earth? To do what? To accomplish what? Do you even know? Are you, again, are you just going through the motions? What is the one thing 
you would do if you only had one choice or one thing that you could do? What is that thing? So when you answer these questions, it's going to reveal to me what you value. Okay. And as we get into this discussion today, it's only, I'm only going to take a few minutes to talk about this, but I'm going to give you a homework assignment around what is your why. And so let me start by telling you who I am and why I'm here. That'll give you some indication. Maybe it'll help you figure out why you're here. First of all, I know that I love to teach. And so I know that I am a teacher, right? I, I can teach real estate. I teach the Bible. I can teach life skills. I am a teacher. That's a gift. That's a talent that I have. I know that. And so I want to use that for the betterment of others. Teaching is not something that, that's for me, it's for me to take my gift and to give it to someone else. Now, I enjoy the studying, I enjoy the praying, I enjoy all the things I do to put into myself that I might give to you, but at the end of the day, I love teaching. <laughs> I, I get up every day knowing that I have an opportunity to share the wisdom that God has given me the experiences, the knowledge, everything that I am, I have the ability to share that with you. I also know that I'm here to be a service. That, that's, that's why I'm here. I'm here to serve others. I'm here to give, I'm here to love, and I'm to support those that are in my circle. That includes you. That's why I'm here. So I'm a teacher and I'm here to give service. But I'm also here to use my gifts, my talents, my abilities to help others. Not only, and I talked about this before, I am inspired, I want to inspire you as I am aspiring to be better. So as I aspire, I want to inspire you using all my talents and gifts and ability to share them with you. I want you to see in me something you say, well, dang, if Mr. Ray can do it, maybe I can do it. That's what I want to inspire. I also know that I am a servant of the most high God in whom God, I'm here to serve you with my whole being. The Bible says I love the Lord thy God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and then love my neighbor as myself. That's why I'm here, to serve and to love others. And then finally, I know that I am a steward. You know what a steward is? A steward is just a manager of somebody else's stuff. So I realize everything belongs to God. I'm not my own. A cow on a thousand hill belongs to him. So ain't none of it mine anyway. I'm just a steward. So everything that I have, financially, physically, spiritually, emotional, whatever it is, all I am is a steward. All right? And so I'm putting the question back on to you. Do you know who you are? Do you know why you're here? We need to discover that because if not, you're just floundering around here, just doing stuff, going about your business, not even knowing your purpose. The goal is to know your purpose. All right? So that's one thing. But I need to tell you something that some of you may not even know about yourself. This is what I do know about you. I know, first of all, that you are immortal that you are spirit and that you are now existing in this human body. This body that we see, this is not who we are. It's the soul, it's the spirit in, inside of us is who we are. So I know that you are spirit. And I know because, how do you know that? Because God said that he breathed into you and man became a living soul. So I know your spirit. The Bible also says over in 1 Corinthians, know you not that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? That's who you are. You are an immortal spirit. You are like God. He created you like him in his image. Well, what's his image? No, it's not talking about this physical image. It's talking about everything that you are. You can hear, you can see, you can smell, you can taste, you can ration, you can think. You All those things that you are that have nothing to do with your physical, that's who you are. It's the spirit in you. So I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're a spirit. I also know that you're a genius. You didn't even know that, did you? You didn't know that you, every one of us has a genius inside of us. Oh, yes, we do. And you sometimes have been, 
what I call bamboozle. Somebody told you that you wasn't nothing. Somebody told you that you were never going to amount to nothing. You were never going to be anything. Uh, you just might as well stop. Somebody messed up your mind and told you something that was not true about you. You are a genius. You have gifts, talents, and abilities that you don't even know that you have because you've been bamboozled and believing something that you're not. Oh, he's never going to amount to anything. Not even going to finish school. Don't even know how to handle money. Don't do nothing. Don't believe the hype. You are a genius. And my goal is to pull the genius out in you. Oh, I know you love. Oh, how do I know you love? Because the Bible said God so loved you that he, he gave his only begotten son that I know that you love. Not only are you loved by God, you're loved by your family. You're loved by your friends. You're loved by those around. You are loved. Don't worry about the haters, baby. You are loved. Know that. I love you. God loves you. And a lot of people love you and they want to see you succeed. So know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you're loved. The other thing I know about you, you didn't know I know this, but you have a purpose. You have a purpose. And my goal is to help you recognize what that purpose is. It may not be real estate. It may not be whatever it is. I just use real estate as a means to show you what I'm gifted in, right? Uh, I, I'm gifted in real estate. I know how to do real estate. That's just me. That may not be you, but you do have a, a, a genius and a purpose that God wants to work out through your life. So here's the homework. I want you to write down who are you? First of all, not your name. I know your name. I know your name, baby. But who are you really? And why are you here? So think about it in terms of what's my purpose? What's my mission? What's my vision? You know, I just share with you. I'm a teacher. I'm a steward. You know, I, I know these things about myself. I know these things. What do you know about you? Write that down. And if you're bold enough, I want you to be willing to share it with us next week. How about that? All right, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We about to get into this thing. So again, I, I, the first part of my lesson, I'm gonna be talking about mindset and how do we get our mindset right? And so one of the things we're gonna be working over the next few weeks is, well, what do you really value? What is your purpose? What's your mission? What's your goal? We gotta outline that before we even talk about where you're trying to go in real estate. All right, so we gotta, we gotta get that done. So here we go. Uh, so over the next few weeks, this is what we're going to talk about. And we, we, I'll, I'll give you an opportunity to come back in later and at the end of this session, talk to me a little bit about, you know, what I just talked about. Uh, if you already know what your mission and your goals and all those things, so I want you to share with the team. But now let's get into the practical application part of what we're going to be talking about over the next few weeks. And uh, we're going to be, it's, it's what I call the acquisition series. So when we talk about real estate, how you make money in real estate is you got to buy properties uh, at a discount. You got to buy them below market. You can't make property. You can't make money in real estate uh, by buying property at the retail value. Can't do it. Oh, and some say you can. Well, I'm saying you can't make real money at it, right? You need to be able to identify how to get properties that are off the market that, that nobody knows about that you can go in and you can get them at a discount. Okay. So today we're going to talk about, I'm going to tell you about the wholesale process. Now, I'm not talking about the wholesale process from the, from the point of you becoming a wholesaler. I want to talk to you about how you need to, how you can buy property wholesale, right? And you may not ever sell it to anybody else to complete the process. You may just hold on to it yourself. You may flip it. You may, uh, you may actually sell it to somebody else and make a fee on it. But the goal is to get you to understand you got to get wholesale property, right? And then we'll talk about how you identify those properties. Uh, I'm going to help you determine how you estimate uh, the cost for repair. That's very big. Uh, we need to figure out how we get to the maximum allowable offer using the uh, after repair value. So the ARV is the after repair value. I'm going to show you how to get that. And then also with the maximum allowable offer that you can offer the seller for that property. I'll, quick, I'll teach you how to do a quick title search, make sure you're not getting a problem property. Uh, we're gonna create some scripts on 
how you can talk to the seller when you make contact with them. Uh, we're gonna cheat you how to get the property on the contract, actually show you the contract, how it's written up, all that good stuff. And then if you really wanna get in the wholesale business, how you can find a buyer and close the deal, right? But initially I wanna teach you how to get wholesale properties because that's how you're gonna make money, right? Whether you're buying and hold, which I love, you know I love the buy and hold, baby. You got to do the bird strategy. If you've been with me any amount of time, the bird strategy, baby, is where you make uh, income on a monthly basis. It's residual income. It's, it's income that you're going to get passively, right? The goal is not to work for your money. The goal is to make your money work for you. And so one of the things that we also do in the wholesale is you can get in wholesale without any money. That's, that's the great thing about wholesale. You don't have to have any money, right? And so I'm gonna show you how, even if you don't have any money, how you can get in this game. So hopefully um, we can get that done here in the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes. So I think I'll stop and take any questions real quick before we get into the wholesale process. Are there any questions? Ah, uh, yeah, here we go, baby. We about to get into it. I got some pills. They gave me some oxycodone now. Now y'all know what that stuff do. That stuff make you crazy. So I'm not trying to stay on that stuff too long. So if I say something out of line, you say, oh, he's on that oxycodone, baby. Don't, don't, don't listen to him. But I'm trying not to take none of that stuff, but sometimes it hurts so bad, baby. I got to have it. It hurts so bad, but I ain't no whip, baby. I'm strong, I'm tough. I'm gonna make it through this thing. All right, let's go, baby, let's go. So the agenda for today, we're going to talk about what is wholesaling. We'll look at the process. We'll talk about the pros and cons, uh, how to be a successful wholesaler. And then we got to do the math, baby. You know, don't fall in love with them homes. You got to fall in love with them numbers. And so we got to know what that maximum liable offer is going to be. And then I'll give you some of my thoughts around wholesaling. All right, let me turn off my video here. So uh, let's, let's just do a disclosure right here. Quick disclosure so everybody know. Yeah, I know I'm not an attorney, although I did want to be an attorney at one point, uh, but uh, I, I wasn't able to go and get that degree. So I'm not an attorney, but I would love to be an attorney. So I'm not. So don't say Mr. Ray was giving me legal advice. I didn't give you that, baby. I'm not a CPA. I didn't even like accounting in school, baby. So uh, you can't accuse me of being no CPA. So when I talk about the numbers, I'm only talking my opinion, baby. So don't try to hold me down. Well, Mr. Ray said this, said that. Yeah, I did to some degree, but don't put me up in the court of law and try to hold me to it. I ain't no CPA. I'm not even a real estate agent, boy. <laughs> Y'all listening to a guy ain't even got a real estate license. Guess what? I don't want one. Because as a rogue real estate investor, I don't have to put up with all the rules, regulations, disclosures, all this and all that. No, 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 baby. I can go directly to the seller and buy that home, make a contract, sign the deed. I can do it all without a real estate agent, baby. I don't have to be one, but I got one in the house in case I want to do it. Lila B can do what I need to have done if I need a real estate agent. But here's what I am, baby. I am a coach. I am a mentor, I am a teacher, I'm a sometime motivational speaker, and I'm a rogue real estate investor, baby. That's what I do. I love them numbers, I love them houses. I got a fleet, I got a portfolio of houses, baby, that are making me money right now. You ain't even know, did you? Even when I go lay in my bed tonight, guess what? I got properties that's making me money, and I wanna teach you how to do the same thing. The goal is not to work 40 hours a week for 40 years so that you can live on 40% of your income. That's that's the old way of doing it, baby. We, we You can't do that. You got to learn how to be an entrepreneur. You got to learn how to make money on your own, get your little side hustle. And I'm not saying it's real estate. I'm saying for me, that's what it is. But if you own this tape today, then you have an interest in real estate. And I'm going to show you how to make money at this game, baby. And you got me as your mentor, as your coach as your teacher. So let's define wholesaling right here. In, 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 in real estate, wholesaling, a wholesaler makes a contract with a seller, okay? And, and when, when I say a wholesaler, I mean, he finds somebody who wants to sell it. He finds somebody who wants to buy that same property 
that 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 this customer wants to sell and you bring them together and you make money on the in between right and so uh what we do is we buy we buy a home for like 60 right and then we're going to sell it to somebody for 70 and we're going to keep the 10 grand in between that's all wholesaling is baby and the goal is to find distressed properties that people don't want no more and you can buy them at a wholesale and you can sell it to somebody that wants to fix it up or buy it as a as a rental in most cases that's what we want to do right so as a wholesaler i'm looking for deals that i can keep on my own not that i can sell to somebody else i want to keep these deals my own but but as a definition you you you, you find a seller you find a buyer you make money on the in between okay so let's talk about is it legal mr ray you talk about you ain't no no uh, attorney all this all that well take this with a grain of salt this is one man's opinion. Is it legal? Well, there, there's, there's two schools of thought here. There's some that say it's illegal. And they say, because as a wholesaler, you're acting as a broker. And if you're a broker, that requires a license. Okay. So there's some stuff moving through the Oklahoma legislature right now that's trying to outlaw wholesaling. What it's trying to, when I say outlaw, it's trying to make you become a real estate agent to do this wholesaling, what I'm about to teach you today. Now, I don't know if the law is gonna pass. It's passed in some other states, but right now today, wholesaling in my mind is not illegal, right? Now, if they pass this law, and we'll talk about that later, it may be that now you gotta work through a broker or a licensed real estate agent to do what I'm about to teach you today. And those that say it's legal, basically I, I'm, I'm in that camp. All I'm doing is signing a contract with the seller, and then I'm assigning it to somebody else for a fee. So I'm not even I'm not even buying the property. I'm not even taking deed to the property. I'm selling my interest in the property. I have a contract that says that I, I'm going to buy this property in 30 days, and if I don't buy it in 30 days, then it just goes away, right? Now maybe I put some earnest money up. If I put earnest money up, I lose the earnest money. So I don't have an obligation to close that deal, but I should, right? If I promoted myself to be uh, be willing to buy that property from that seller, I should have every intention of buying that property. Most wholesalers don't have that intention. They have the intention of selling it to somebody else, right? So let's stop right there uh, and, and take any questions we might have. I want to take my time, make sure we got any questions. Any questions? All right, y'all got this down. All right, let's keep moving then. So let's talk about some of the benefits of wholesaling. In wholesaling, you don't need any money, right? Because you can go, okay, well, I'll say you don't need any money. You need at least some earnest money, right? If you sign a contract, earnest money, $100, $200. That's what you need. So it's not really a lot of money. You just need the money you need to put the earnest money down to say you have an interest in buying this property. You never have to hold the deed to the property. You never have to go down to the county and file deed. You're simply buying an interest in the property. You don't need a real estate license. Now I said that the laws may change later, but today you don't need a whole, you don't need a real estate license to do wholesale. You're simply the middleman, right? You're just a retailer, right? You, you buy and wholesale, you sell in retail. That's all you do. It can be very lucrative. It can be very, a lot of people making a lot of money uh, doing wholesaling. All right. So let's talk about some characteristics of a good wholesaler. A few characteristics. One is the ability to find good deals, right? And so one of the things that I use is a software called PropStream. And later on, and in the next few weeks, I'm going to show you how we use PropStream uh, to find leads. But there's other ways you can find leads, right? But you got to be good at estimating the after repair value. That ARV, we're going to do it every week. You're going to have uh, you're going to have homework figuring that ARV. And until you get very good at it, uh, we're going to do homework. Everybody's got to get really, really good at doing what I call the after repair value on a property. That's basically what, what, what will it sell for when you get it fixed up? You gotta be good at estimating repair costs. 
Again, I'm going to teach you how, what things to look for, what the average cost of replacing a bathroom, a kitchen, carpet, roofing, all that type stuff. So you get a good idea how you can estimate so you can be good at understanding what the maximum amount of money that you can offer on that property. Good at estimating potential rents, right? You got to know what what, what uh, properties are renting for in that area where you're buying that house because you're going to be selling to people that are going to be investors uh, uh, like myself. You know, we're going to know before we buy that property from you, we're going to know what the rents are in that area, right? So you got to be good at finding out what the rents are. Understand what's the good math behind a flip, right? If I'm, if I'm, if I'm going to turn around and sell this house to a flipper, then I need to know how that flipper is going to make money and I need to communicate to him how he can make money on this deal. You got to, again, we talked about the rental already. Uh, and you got to be able to talk to people. You got to be able to get people to trust you and understand that, you, that you're going to make it a win-win situation, right? They're going to win because they're going to get rid of a property they don't want. You're going to win because you're going to make some money and, or you're going to keep the property and rent it out or you're going to flip it or you're going to sell it to somebody else, right? And also, if it has a bank note on it, the bank wins because the bank gets their money. So it's a win-win-win, baby. That's what we're looking for. Win-win-win. And then you got to be good at negotiating and not, and, and not take advantage of people. When I say not take advantage of people, that means that if you know the property is worth $10,000, uh, you can't offer them uh, $200, right? I mean, come on now. Who does that? I mean, you, you you can still buy it at a discount, still make money without raking people over the code, right? I won't do that. So what are some of the pros and cons, Mr. Ray? Pros and cons of wholesaling. First of all, the pros. You in Most of these deals, wholesale deals, if you find a seller and a buyer, you can close the deal within seven, 10, you know, sometimes 30 days, right? So it's, it's quick money for the most part. Also, wholesaling gives you an opportunity to learn about the in industry, right? Because now you get to learn how to do comparables. You get to understand how to do ARVs. You know what rents are. You're estimating repairs. I mean, you're learning a lot about real estate as you're going through this wholesale process. And then uh, it's accessible to people that don't have a lot of money, right? If you don't have a lot of money, you have a lot of cash, then this is Wholesaling is the way to go because you can get in these properties cheap. But there are some downsides to wholesaling. One is, this is hard work. It's, these, these properties out there are not just out there waiting for you to come, come pick them up, right? It's kind of like finding a needle in the haystack, but when you find them, baby, they're good. So it's hard work, but I'm going to show you how, how the best wholesalers are, are able to find good deals. Uh, the income can be predictable. You may find a house you, this month. You may not find a house next month. I mean, it's unpredictable. It's also contingent on fine buyers. If you're not finding investors that's willing to pay cash for these houses, then you don't have a deal. That, unless you're willing to take that house yourself, buy it, fix it up, or flip it, then you got to find a buyer that's willing to pay cash. The banks are not going to finance these type homes. These homes are distressed. They're, 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 they're in dire need of work and repair. That's why you're able to get them at a discount. So banks are, banks are not in this deal. Banks are not going to do any deals with you on this. Uh, and then it's, it's, it's difficult uh, to keep a buyer's list up. But these buyers, they come and they go, right? Any questions so far on any of that? All right. So I don't know if I have time to get into the wholesale process. So I'm going to stop it right here and we're going to save this uh, for next time. So everybody come on, turn your videos on. Let's see who's all out there. Let's ask some questions. Let's get this thing going. It's very important that we ask questions and that we understand what's going on, all right? I may show you something here later, but for now, let's go ahead and uh, let's get the questions out there. So we're talking about the wholesale process, baby. What, what questions have you got about anything that I just shared with you? So can you give us an instance that if um, 
Because in the legal, illegal part of it, uh -huh. like, it, can you give an example of where somebody got in trouble for doing that? What does that look like? So or, right now, is it not even a thing? No, you, you can't get in trouble for it today. So, so here's the issue. Here's what's happening. Some of the wholesalers are going out here. So they're signing contracts with little old ladies, right? That don't, they, they got these homes. They don't know what to do. So they'll come in and they'll slick talk them and they'll get this property for pennies on the dollar, right? They'll sign them up. Oh, I'm gonna buy this property from you. I'm paying cash for it. I'm gonna give you this money in the next five to 10 days. And they have no intentions of doing that, right? And so what they do, they, so they get the property on the contract, they go out and try to find a buyer and they're unable to find a buyer, right? And so then they come back to the little old lady saying, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't wanna buy your house. And so they've wasted her time. So to me, that's not illegal, but it's unethical, right? And so okay. if, you, if you didn't have any intentions of buying it, and so that's why they're writing the law because there are people out here taking advantage of people that don't know the real estate business. And so they're bamboozling them, getting these houses under contract. And then, you know, they're not able to sell them. And then these people are sitting there thinking, hey, this contract is good. And they don't put like a minimal amount of earnest money in there, like a hundred dollars. Well, they don't care if they lose a hundred dollars. So they just run around out here trying to find as much property as they can, get it under contract so they can sell it to somebody else. And a lot of times it doesn't go through. So it's not illegal. To me, it's unethical, right? I didn't have any intention, but so so. How do you make that that contract ethical? You tell the person, "Look, I may not buy this property, but I'm going to do my best to sell it." To me, now you're doing it the right way. You say, "Hey, uh, I'm going to try to buy it, but if I don't buy it, I'm going to try to find somebody that that will take this property. And if I'm able to do that, we got a deal. If not, then you know, at the end of this 30 days." then I'm gonna have to you know, give the property back to you. To me, if you're doing it that way, now that's the right way to do it. Good question. What else you got? Thank you. You're welcome. What other questions you got? I think I missed something, uh, hold on. No, I didn't get to that part yet. Never mind. That's that's going to come next week because I'm telling you the type of properties we're looking for, they're distressed, people going through divorce, people that's in uh, bankruptcy, uh, people that their job is moving. These are people, they don't care about the house. Maybe they inherit it. You know, it's run down. So these are all distressed properties. So I'll talk about that next week. Those are the type of the properties that you're going to be trying to uh, get on the contract. What else? Y'all, y'all picked that up pretty good. Pretty good. Come on, give me a couple more questions or else I'm ready to go get ready for the big game tonight, baby. Who you got, Baylor? Who you got, Gonzaga? Come on, Bears. Come on. Oh, oh, Bears. oh get out of here. She got this little Baylor flag flying out in front of the house. I'm like, really, dude? Why, why, why I even do that? I don't know. Anyway, Chad, hey, Mr. Ray? The, the Razorbacks was in it, but y'all ain't in it no more, man. I know oh, y'all no. no, we couldn't have them. Uh, <laughs> I think, uh, well, we'll do it next year. That's yeah, what we always say. <laughs> you always got but Ray. On you know you if you uh, go out and make offers, generally you're working one deal at a time. I'm assuming. Yeah. And 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 what's what's the? I guess the where's your stop point? You know you got 30 days to sell. If it's looking like you're not going to make that. Do you ever consider, well, I'll just go ahead and buy it? Yes. For and me, not sell it. as an investor, the first thing I'm looking for, I'm looking to buy it anyway. I'm not looking to be a wholesaler, James. I, I'm looking to get this property wholesale and put it in my portfolio. Yeah. No, I think if I was going to do it, that's what I would be thinking too. Yeah. I'd be right. trying to figure out how to buy it. Yeah. 
Because I don't like that pressure of trying to trying to sell it. Yeah. Try to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> I need more than 30 days, man. I need yeah. to. And so that's what wholesalers do. That's their now. whole game. But for me, as a buy and hold investor, I want these properties cheap like this. I'm a buy yeah. and hold guy. Now I also may flip it, James. I may say, you know yeah. what? It, it may be in an area that I might not get the rents I want, but I may be able to put maybe ten thousand in it, flip it, and make twenty thousand. You know, so that's those are the two reasons I would be doing. It. And I'm so Ray, that, that, that second piece, that second piece that you just mentioned, yeah, flipping it, yeah, still within those thirty days. No, no, no. I gotta buy it within those thirty days. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I gotta buy it now. It may take me a month or two to get it uh, get it fixed up uh, to flip it, uh, unless it just needs cosmetic. And most of these houses are gonna need more than cosmetic if I'm able to get it at the discount I'm looking at, Larry. Right. Right. Okay. Good question. And there, question. and there, uh, and I understand. I think you told us on a previous class that there are people that are out looking to buy property. Yeah, all the time. I, I, I'm a guy, if a wholesaler brings me a good deal, I'll buy it from him. I've bought properties from wholesalers. I bought four properties in the last four years from wholesalers because they were good deals. So mm -hmm. they made their little money. They made their little 10000 but I still made money on it because I had enough in it uh, after I made the repairs to keep it in my portfolio to make money or else I flipped it. And uh, I haven't flipped it. I'm, I'm getting ready to flip my first property ever. I never sell the goose that lays the golden egg, but for the first time since I got in, I started doing this wholesaling deal, I'm going to flip my first property. I'm going to show you guys uh, that property here in a minute. There is a possibility there are some people on this call that may want to buy. Exactly. That's my other deal, Jay. <laughs> I'm in this deal to help you find property and if I don't like it, I can offer it to you or something. Hey, hey, James, you you about to expose us all. <laughs> this is the best call out of ever heard. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, I got you. I so got let me you. show. So let me show you uh, a prop. This is the property uh, that uh, I'm getting ready to uh, flip. Let's see, let me find my initial. Right, and then the price range that we're talking about on there is, you know, can, you know, is it that anywhere from five ten to hundred thousand, or, or we get to set that. So we set that, James, and so that's a great point. We're not out here buying million dollar properties, right? So for me, the sweet spot is like between 100 and 200. That's, that's the sweet spot for me. Uh, you get below that, uh, you can still make money. If you get way above that, there's not, you know, unless uh, it's, it's harder to sell properties at $500,000. Let's, just, let's yeah. just be honest. So the sweet spot for me is 100 to 200. That's the sweet spot. Uh, let's see. Here's the property here. I want to. Hold on. Let me see if it's going to work. I may have to open it as something else. Yeah, it's not going to let me do that. Open with Windows Media. All right, I think this is it right here. So this is the property uh, that I, first property that I bought wholesale. Let me close some of this other stuff. Y'all see the video there? 
Yes. Okay. Well, this yeah. is this is it. This is what they look like. So let me give you the dimensions on it. This is a five bedroom, three bath, thirty five hundred square feet. And this was the first time I walked in this property, and I got it uh, wholesale. I worked the list. There was a, this list was on a, uh, the property was on foreclosure list. I contacted the owner and uh, negotiated a price. And I'm going to show you the numbers later. I'm not going to show you the numbers now. I just want you to show you the property. Now, if most of y'all walked in here, you would have just walked right back out and said, I'm not buying it, right? Hey, Ray, is this the property we did the walkthrough with, through with you? That's it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a walkthrough I just did uh, two days ago also. So this is when I bought it back in February. As you can see, it's got extensive damage and it's totally pitted out. This is the master bedroom upstairs. Actually, it has two master bedrooms. This is the one that's upstairs. It's a hot mess, I know. Probably should have went in with my, <laughs> with my hazmat suit, right? So first thing you got to do is just clean the daggone thing out, right? So I, I, uh, I rented a big dumpster and hired Mary the hauler to come over. She cleaned it out for like So it's a total gut. So you saw the kitchen, the kitchen was gonna be gutted, all the bathrooms gutted, uh, all the floors uh, were gonna be taken out. Everything had to be repainted, all new doors, all new fixtures, all new lighting, uh, all new cabinet work. The only thing we're not changing is the windows. The windows were in pretty good shape. Uh, so we, we didn't have to change those. This is upstairs. Again, there's four bedrooms uh, downstairs. No, excuse me. One bedroom downstairs, four bedrooms upstairs, and another extra room. This is that other extra room right here. It can really be uh, a six bedroom right here, and it's molded out. So what we're going to do is put a closet in here. We're going to make this the sixth bedroom. Mr. Ray, so do you got to pull out that entire ceiling as well? No. Yo, oh, that one, yeah, the one that had the mold, yeah, you have to take that down to the stud there. And we did. We had to take all that down, put all new sheet rock in, whole nine yards. All that tile is coming out. All that's coming out in there. Um, everything's coming out. So this is, uh, yeah. They just pretty much left everything. So you see the sheetrock there has to be replaced. New garage door, new back door, uh, new compressing unit. Uh, outside, we're replacing that. Had a little, so all the siding on the sides gotta be redone. All the landscaping has to be redone. Everything on that siding is coming. We're gonna put smart siding on it. Uh, we'll keep that little overhang there, paint it, make it nice. Uh, new back sliding door. Again, we're not replacing the windows. We'll clean them up. 
Uh, they're they're pretty much good storm windows, vinyl windows. So this is what it looks like. So let me let me stop right there. And uh, one quick question. Yeah. So with regards to wholesaling, a lot of times you're working with people that have been approached by um, multiple, you know, folks, wholesalers interested yeah. in, in investing. Um, how do you gain their approach or, or what is, how do you gain their trust or what is your approach into uh, getting them to, to go with you? In terms of so, yeah, that's, that is a, uh, that's something that you, that you learn. You got to get them to, uh, to understand that you have their best interest at heart. First of all, that you have the ability to buy this house, that you're an astute investor, you understand about houses and that you're here to help them. And so from that standpoint, I just try to get their confidence and help them understand, I really want this house. It's in a nice neighborhood. It's rough, it's tough, it's, it looks bad, but I can bring it back to life. And I know you got memories in this house I know, you know, for whatever reason you lost it because you couldn't pay for it or whatever. I sympathize with that, but I'm going to help you in that. I'm going to take it off your hand. I'm going to get this foreclosure off your off your life, and I kind of approach it like that. And you know, it's a hit and miss. So out of, out of 30, 40 people I talked to, you know, I only got two houses. So, but those 30, 40, you know, I had to talk to them. I had to hear no, no, you're a scammer. You don't have, you don't know anything. You don't know anything about me, my house. Why are you calling me? Don't call me no more. So you got to go through all that. So again, you got to get their confidence. Any other questions? All right. So Mr. Here, A. Yeah. Yes. Do you ever find, I know you've bought a few just straight off of pop stream, but have you ever found, or would you suggest finding some buyers before and then like looking at what they're trying to look for? Absolutely. And so I have some buyers uh, that I did just that. So, uh, so I know there are some people um, that, that are on uh, Facebook and some other places that there's a lot of buyers out there. Uh, there's buyers, uh, there's buyers everywhere. So I, I'm, I'm an investor, so I know a lot of other investors. And so I know guys that buy properties like this. So uh, I do have a buyer's list of about 10 people that I know that are in the business. So first thing I do is I run it by them if I don't want to keep it myself. So yeah, it's good to build up your buyer's list. If you want to be a wholesaler, you got to have a great buyer's list or else you're just getting these properties under contract and you're not able to sell them. All right. Ray, the, yeah. Ray, the house you just showed us. Yeah. Do you have one contractor working that, or is that, are you working multiple? No, I'm, I got one guy, general contractor. And, and he's uh, taking care of everything. Yeah. The total rehab on that one was 80,000, James. Yeah. And and you just told him what had to happen. And yeah, we I, contracted with board. that. Here's what I want you to do. He wrote it up. I checked it off. I gave him the first down payment on it and he was off and running. Now, let me show you what it looks like today. In fact, this property is gonna be done within a week, I believe. So I talked to him today. We went out there and looked at everything. Uh, what's this, March 20, this is March 27th that I just walked through. And yes, Vaughn, this is the same one that you guys seen. Hold on here. I'm actually getting pretty good at this, man. I'll tell you what. Now I'll do the share. Presto. All right, here we go. So here's what it looks like on March 22nd. You see, I got rid of the siding on the outside. We got some of that done already. So you see, we got it all cleaned out. We got everything painted. We got the mirrors off the wall. So the whole house has been painted uh, to this point. We do have uh, some of the cabinet work in, in the uh, kitchen. It's coming around real good. Cabinet work in. 
We'll get all the lighting, all new lighting. Uh, we'll be going in also. All the plugs and fixtures are going to be changed. Uh, back door has already been replaced. Again, this is a huge home, 3,500 square feet. Got the, Mr. Ray, uh, while you showing that, I have a question. Yeah. Have you ever had any issues with vandals or anything during your process or? I haven't. Okay. Now I have been, I've had vandals in my rental properties before, back when they were still in copper out of, uh, see, they got the bathroom done here pretty much. So you can see towers going in here. It's coming around. Uh, this is that other downstairs master bedroom I was telling you about. But back to your question, Roxanne. Uh, I haven't had any, any vandals at any of the properties I'm fixing up. Uh, it depends on your neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. Find them in good. tough neighborhoods, you're going to have vandals. Mm -hmm. this, is pretty, this is a pretty decent neighborhood. Uh, these steps are going to be redone uh, totally. You can see all the walls have been repaired. Uh, we got uh, some of the bathroom has, has been put in up here. It's gonna be the bath right there, jacuzzi. And you got a shower over here. Got some of the shower going in, nice tiling uh, going in on that. Did you remodel that shower? Uh, yes. That's totally, we, we took it down to scratch. You just saw it, right? You didn't see that? Yeah, that was nice. Hold on, let's go back. Yeah, that shower. Hold on, go back a little bit more. Yeah, so that's the new shower right there, Dan. Yeah, that's nice. There is a big hole up in the wall over there. All that's been repaired. That big hole was up there. Now it's gonna be carpet up here. All the bedrooms and the hallways up here will be carpeted. So one of the bedrooms, doors already replaced. Everything's been painted. So in the bedrooms, all that's left is in, in there is the carpet. This is the other uh, shared bathroom. Uh, we got the tile in mostly, still tiling. Uh, ain't got none of the toilets in yet. That'll be coming. Again, next week, uh, I, I expect this property will be done. We'll be putting the finishing touches on it. This was March the 27th. I went over there yesterday and a lot, whole lot more was done. They actually have the floors downstairs, the wood floors downstairs have already been put in. I didn't get a video of it though. Because my arm was hurt. And nobody would carry the camera for me. Did you have to do any AC work? Yes, uh, AC. A, a, both air conditioning and heating units are going to be replaced. We have, we put 5,000, uh, I think it was 5,000 we put on those. So it might come in like about 8,000. The great thing about this contractor, his bid that he gave me, he's not deviating from that bid. So, so far we found two things uh, that he's not going to charge me for. That there was uh, water uh, in the vents. They got floor vents. And there was a couple of places where water was getting in somewhere. And so he, he had to bust out some of the concrete floors to get that fixed. He didn't charge me for that. And so there were some other things that came in. Uh, this guy is good uh, because he knows uh, that he's going to get paid. He knows that I'm a serious investor. He, only, he, he not only wants this house, he wants every house that I ever do. So he's going to make sure he treats me right. And so I just gave him my other property, 
Uh, I don't have time to show you that today. I'll show you that next week. It's almost time for the big game, baby. Any more questions before we wrap this thing up? Chase, Mr. I see you. Hold it for a second. Chase, we got a new member. Chase, uh, he's out there. Welcome to the welcome to the team. Let everybody see you. Turn your video on so we know who you are. How you doing? It's on the wood lid right now, but I've been listening. All right. Chase, Chase is on board with us. This is the Reckon Reckon team. Y'all welcome Chase to the game. Welcome, Chase. Welcome, Chase. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome, Chase. Thank you. (laughs) Mr. Ray, one last question. Yeah. You know, if you if you decide to buy a property wholesale, yeah, you still do you have to still go through uh, closing and all that and or is there's a process to that too, right? Yeah, you still, now, as an investor like me, I don't have to go to a closing company because I know how to write my own contracts. But I, I like to do that because I might miss something. I might miss a lien. I might miss, yeah. a, uh, you know, a tax, uh, something on there. So I always want to go and let the uh, let them do a, a really, really good title search because I'll do my own title search first just to make sure that, you know, I'm not missing anything. But in case I miss something, I like to take it to the title company. So, yes, Jane, you're still going to have all those closing costs. So it's going to be whatever the property is, you can just add on 3% closing costs. Okay. And then if you 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 find a buyer, they'll take care of all that. Huh? If you find a buyer, you just let them. Yeah. You just sign your interest over Exactly. Buyer yeah. plays all closing costs, anything associated with that. I just want my $10,000. Yeah. That's you why have you a, buy them at a steep discount. Do you have a title company that you like to, that you recommend or you have you like to go yeah, with? I just use uh, a Chicago Title. It's okay. what I use. They're pretty good. And they work with investors all the time. Okay. Well, what's the uh, amount of time you think it takes to do the the process of that uh, closing normally? Uh, 30 days. Okay. If there's, you know, you, you like to try to close them in two weeks if there's nothing on the title. But with everything going on right now, everybody, I mean, the housing market is crazy right now. So you got to get in line uh, to get your, get your property closed. It's taking up to 30 days to get stuff closed now. Oh, okay. Because the market is so hot. Yeah. Everybody's spending money. Yep. Yep. And it's a good time to it's a good time to be a seller. Uh, I'm thinking about putting a couple of mine on the market right now, just for that very reason. But again, I don't like to sell the goose and lay them go nays, baby. But every now and then you gotta sell one or two so you can upgrade and get some others. And so I'll be taking you through some of some of the analysis I'm looking at. A um, couple of properties that I got right now. All right, it is now eight o'clock. We got to end this thing. Hey, I'm 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 excited about this whole premiere uh, process. Excited about everybody that's on the team. We are going to get out there and make this money, baby. We go don't fall in love with them houses, right? Fall in love with them numbers. Y'all have a great day. Let's go beat them bears. Beat them bears. I got a hundred dollars. Me and Lila got hundred dollar bet, baby. I need Zaga to come through. Talk to y'all later. Have a great day. All right.